All right, so the next plant is right here. This is, there's two plants I use right here. I just also want to point out there's dragonflies mating behind that stump right there, and then they're not shy. It's a, there's a male and a female, and the female is dipping, so the male is holding her, her with, I forget the name of the specialized claws that hold behind her neck, like, they, like pincers, and he's holding her. He's already done his spermy thing with her, and now he's holding on, and she's dipping her eggs into the water. You ever seen that where dragonflies kind of fly backwards a little bit and just put their butt end, their abdomen, and their ovipositor, to be exact, into the water. What she's doing is she's playing eggs on the vegetation, and he's making sure that no other male's coming. Well, that's what I project, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I read the book. But it's happening right behind that stump over there. Uh, the male or female, I forget which one, is super bright red, very pretty. There's three species of dragonflies in here, at least. So this right here is Biden's just like yours and mine's favorite vice president, right? Yeah, I mean, how can you not love that guy? He's doing so much good, working for the planet, right? <laughs> hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. So, um, so this is Biden's. And I'm not sure what species. Most likely this is a Volgata or Frondosa. Tobias, did you leave? You here? Volgata, Frondosa. Okay. So this is called beggar's ticks. Beggar's ticks. And the reason it's called beggar's ticks is that the seeds of them have these two hooks. And if you have animals that get into it, when it goes to seed, it'll be like one seed and these two hook things on the side that hook on beggar ticks. So they're begging a ride on woolly animals and clothing. Um, they're in the Asteraceae. So the genus is Bidens. The family is the Asteraceae, the largest family. There's a bunch of Bidens. They're often weedy and they like to grow around water. Beggar ticks is one name. Nodding burr marigolds are another name if you know them by that. There's a couple of others. Spanish needles. Anybody live near that? That's another kind of Bidens. So this won't make perfect sense yet, but as you study botany, it will. They're easy to tell because the involucral bracts, involucral bracts, involucral bracts, you didn't say it. All right, great. So, <laughs> um, are really large and really very distinctive. So once you know your involucral bracts, really, once you study botany, right, these things become, these will become apparent. So uh, they're easy that way. They're also opposite leafed and compound. So if you went to Tobias's class, <coughs> you'll know what opposite leaf and compound means. Uh, so a compound leaf opposite each other. Uh, the, the whole plant makes a pretty tasty, like a pretty good tasting tea. It's not great. It's mediocre. So the whole plant makes a really fantastic mediocre tea. Um, just add water. Get a French press. Um, you can use... The leaves taste pretty good. The stem is less flavorful, but it does one thing really well. So first, non-toxic. So not conium in any way at all. You could just strip the leaves off, usually in a downward motion, and you just dry this. Or you could take the leaflets off the petioles and rachises, if you know all that, if you're probably into Tobias's class again. Um, and it's a decongestant. So a simple decongestant. And by simple decongestant, um, Pass it around. Thank you. What I mean is, it doesn't really kill anything. It's not a disinfectant, so it's not a plant. Sometimes to decongest, you kill the microbe that's creating the inflammation and the response while you're sniffly. This plant doesn't do this. Somehow, maybe it just closes off the arterioles in the nasal canal. In other words, just stops you from being nosy drippy. Nosy drippy? Nosy drippy. Right, that's right. Remember him? So, um, I don't either. So, uh, so basically, if you're just sniffly and you're just trying to dry your nose up and maybe you have allergies and maybe you can't do your allergies are just affecting you and you can't stop the allergies for whatever reason, but you just have lots of clear runny mucus, just drink really strong cups of Biden's tea. It might not work. Lots of times things don't work. Lots and lots and lots of times things don't work, but sometimes they do work. And the thing is, it's really not that bad tasting. And there's no harmful side effects that I know of. I mean, if you, may, if you put the seeds on you when they're like on stage, then they hurt a little bit. But you're not going to do that. Um, you can also tincture it. I tincture this plant fresh. 
I tincture a lot of plants dry, but this is a plant that I like to tincture fresh. And I would tincture it fresh about one to three, maybe 80%, so one to three, 80% tincture. And it works pretty good as a tincture as well as a tea as a decongestant. And that's it, and it honors Joe Biden's. What could be better, yeah. right? I don't, know who, I don't know who the Biden said it's named after is actually. What do you mean by one to three, like one part alcohol, three parts meat? Yeah, what I would say is just get any medicine making book and they'll explain all, any, my, anything by Michael Moore and lots of people here will know it. So if you just memorize the numbers or write them down, it'll be easy. I've made tinctures before, I was just wondering what the ratio is. Uh, the ratio is, uh, is herb to menstruum, herb weight to fluid volume, herb weight, fluid volume. Yes? I wouldn't consider it food because I don't think it tastes that good. But probably if you had enough ranch dressing, it still wouldn't be food, but the ranch dressing would be nice. Right? Uh, so ready for the next one? Any questions about Biden's? So is Biden's frondosa or Biden's vulgata? I can't tell which, but they, are very, they look a lot alike. <laughs>